As you may have heard, the presidential election is now just 31 days away. But this morning, we're also taking you way, way back to the days of the first presidential elections and the remarkable origins of four of our first five presidents. It's the focus of a new book called The Virginia Dynasty by former second lady Lynn Cheney. I love the, uh, the process of research, especially. Like the men she writes about, Lynn Cheney has led a life under a glaring spotlight. Second lady of the United States, former chair of the National Endowment for the Humanities, and prolific author, from contemporary novels to children's books, and now history. It's amazing if you think about it, in this little uh, part of the world, a 60 mile circle east of the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, these four amazing leaders uh, came. The Virginia dynasty is about four of the first five men who served as presidents and how for the first 36 years of the Republic, excepting John Adams' single term, all the men elected were basically neighbors. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and James Monroe. People are very familiar with George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, much less so with Monroe and Madison. Why is that? Madison has been consistently undervalued. Cheney's book gives equal attention to four figures who have received unequal attention in history books. She calls Madison, the fourth president, the intellectual force behind both the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. He was followed by another man, also unfamiliar to many today. What should people know about James Monroe that they don't know now? He was a pretty good president. He uh, had a very stable cabinet. He had a reputation, probably it was somewhat justified, as not being quite as clever as his predecessors. But he learned um, along the way, which was a good thing. Monroe, Madison, and Jefferson all competed mightily for the attention and respect of the first member of the dynasty, our first leader, and a bit of a loner. Washington was austere. He tried to make friends, but had a very hard time doing it. People talk about, you know, the loneliness at the top, uh, the loneliness of leadership. And I think that uh, was part of uh, what made Washington the way that he was. He was somewhat isolated by the role he'd played in the revolution. So why did so many men who lived so close together come to lead the nation for more than 30 years? In part, their elite educations. In part because they all benefited heavily from a Southern economic system that relied on enslaved labor. We asked Cheney about that. You don't deal with slaveholding very much in this book. Why? Well, that's not the focus of the book, though I certainly do deal with it. I think, in fact, it was an important purpose of the book to point out that these men, though they were slaveholders, accomplished something uh, quite amazing. They came forth with the ideas and the ideals that became the most powerful weapon for doing away with slavery. Cheney also doesn't talk a lot in the book about the four men's childhoods. Her own children have grown up in a political machine. One's now become part of it. Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney currently has the third highest position in House GOP leadership and made some headlines this summer. Your daughter has been critical of the president over his coronavirus response, and she's taken a great deal of heat from some of her Republican colleagues over that. Have you talked to her about that? Well, I think if I were to... uh to talk about Liz's decisions. I mean, how, how would you feel if your mother were advising you on uh, how you could uh, best appear on television? Probably you wouldn't like it much, and I'm sure Liz wouldn't like it much. Moreover, she knows a lot more about it than I do. But you've been on the battlefield plenty of times, and she is now. That's correct, but uh, she's the active member of the family. Cheney says the focus of her activity these days will remain on writing. At 79, she rarely misses a day. What is next for you? You know, I'm not sure. I wrote children's books for a time. I did that when Dick was vice president. I thought it was a good way to stay out of trouble. So maybe another children's book is in the future. If if my mother were advising me... Yes. (laughs) ...on how to look on television, she would tell me before doing interviews with a former second lady to comb your hair (laughs) um, and look somewhat... Presentable, so my apologies for that, but our thanks to Lynn Cheney for sitting down with us. Yeah, you were blushing a bit, just a bit. (laughs)